Finding the music you love shouldn't be hard. That's why Pandora makes it easy to explore all your favorites and discover new artists and genres you'll love. Enjoy a personalized listening experience simply by selecting any song or album, and we'll make a station crafted just for you. Best of all, you can listen for free. Download Pandora on the Apple App Store or Google Play and start hearing the soundtrack to your life. Hey guys, this is Kenan Thompson. I have a problem with you. Yes, you. None of y'all told me that Auto Trader has millions of new and used cars that I can shop from home. I thought we were friends. I put smiles on your face, but I'm not smiling. No one told me that with Auto Trader, a dealer can deliver cars to my home or that I could shop by price on Auto Trader. No one. Consider this friendship that you just learned we had officially over. Finally, it's easy. Auto Trader. Welcome to True Crime Garage. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Nick, and with me as always, the co-host of this fine garage show. And together, we would like to say that if you're looking for an unexpected friendship, well, then you have come to the right place. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain. Yeah, if you only speak one-fourth of the time, you're called the co-host. It's good to be seen and good to see you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Today in the garage, we are sipping on a beer called I'm Surrounded by Assholes, Hazy, by the observant folks working hard over at the Dirty Ore Beer Company. I'm Surrounded by Assholes, Hazy is, of course, a hazy beer, but it is also an IPA milkshake beer. It's a hazy IPA milkshake with cookies and cream, so it's creamy, hazy, and hoppy with some lactose-added garage-grade four and a quarter bottle caps out of five. And let's give some thanks and praise to our good friends who helped us out with this week's show. First up, we have a shout out to Nick Hiller from Irwin, Pennsylvania. And a nice jib goes out to Joe from Peyton Manning's favorite city, Omaha, Nebraska. Next up, a shout out to Katie from Aurora, Ontario. And last but certainly not least, we like the cut of your jib to Matt and Mary and most of all Snickers. Everyone we just mentioned, including Snickers, went to our website, truecrimegarage.com, clicked on the pint glass, and helped us fill up the old beer fridge for this week's shows. And for that, we thank you. Yeah, B W E W R U N beer run for everything true crime. Check out truecrimegarage.com, and while you're there, sign up on the mailing list so you can be in the know. And that's enough of the business. All right, everybody, gather around, grab a chair, grab a beer. Let's talk some true crime. Two weeks since a waitress at a popular restaurant in eastern Kentucky was found dead. And tonight her family says they're patiently waiting for the investigation to play out. And in the meantime, as 13 News reporter Lane Ball explains, they're raising some questions about a possible communication breakdown at a time when she needed help the most. Amber Spradlin's loved ones were emotional as they gave details on how she died. She was stabbed at least 11 times in her head, her neck, and her throat. I can't imagine what she was going through and, and how she was feeling, and it is, it is horrible. But that's not all they shared Thursday afternoon during a press conference outside of the Floyd County Courthouse. Some members of the community who were there to show support Thursday have questioned how long it's taken to figure out what happened at a home in Martin nearly two weeks ago. 
but the family says they have regular contact with the Kentucky State Police troopers and do not want to rush their investigation process. When they are ready to release it to us, they will. You know, that's, you know, and I want them to do their job the best possible way that they could. You know, I want them to do it correctly so that way we get the right person that did this. While they wait for answers, they're calling into question possible confusion with the 911 system. They're concerned the calls requesting help did not get through to the closest law enforcement agency. If our 911 system has failed her, then at least she's too, it's too late for her, but at least it might help another family. And that's why this is so important. You know, I wouldn't wish this on anybody to have to go through. Floyd County Fiscal Court documents say in December 2022, the decision to move the call center from the Kentucky State Police Post to the city of Prestonsburg was because of an increase in service fees. Now they've launched a petition to move the call center back to the Kentucky State Police Post. A family heartbroken, wanting answers and changes, but willing to be patient until investigators have all the pieces to this puzzle. Reporting in Prestonsburg, Lane Ball, 13 News. You heard it there in that clip there. We have trouble in East Kentucky, and people are emailing True Crime Garage asking us to cover this case. This is a very aggravating and upsetting case. Amber Spradlin, 39 years old, of Prestonburg, killed at a supposed friend's home just over a month ago. The original article that comes out in this case, Captain, is from the... June 21 through 23, Chronicle and Times out of Floyd County, Kentucky, with the headline, KSP, Foul Play Suspected in Floyd Woman's Death. And the article reads, Kentucky State Police said June 19, they suspect foul play in the death of a Prestonburg woman. According to a statement, KSP Post 9 was notified of a deceased female on June 18, at a residence on Arkansas Creek in the Martin community of Floyd County. KSP troopers and investigators responded to the residence on Arkansas Creek in reference to the incident. The initial investigation indicated Amber Spradlin, age 39, of Prestonsburg, had suffered life-threatening injuries as a result of suspected foul play, the statement said. Spradlin was pronounced dead at the scene by the Floyd County Coroner's Office, and Detective Justin Wireman is leading the investigation and was assisted on scene by KSP personnel. This is a case that if you're not in this area, you may not have heard of, but it's making big news in East Kentucky. And the reason being is there's a lot of mystery that surrounds this case. First of all, the information that's coming out they're not releasing hardly any information regarding this homicide. And, and this is a very violent homicide. You heard that in today's trailer. The woman you heard describing the injuries is a relative of Amber Spradlin. The other reason why this has made such big news is it's calling into question the 911 response system and setup there in Floyd County, Kentucky. Now, I believe that we know why they are holding so much information close to the vest in this case. And we'll get into that as we go through the case. But we need to point out here that we had a huge response from our audience and a very much needed call to action here in this case. Well, rightfully so. I think we have some public outrage. You have a lady that was at a party. You have several eyewitnesses. She is murdered. They don't respond to the scene fast enough, which maybe could have saved her life. And there is nobody arrested. There's nobody held accountable for these actions as of yet. 39-year-old Amber Spradlin was laid to rest. Her funeral was June 24th at Davidson Memorial Gardens. Huge outpour from the community and a lot of people in the community reaching out to her family with words of kindness and prayer 
and hoping the best for this family. This case is crazy. And I'll tell you why. I'm not going to sit here and try to walk some kind of fine line because we have friends at KSP, Kentucky State Police. Over the years, the garage has made friends with several of the troopers and detectives for the Kentucky State Police. They are a little bit under fire with this whole 911 situation, which we will dive into and make clear the details of that. But also, this case makes me very furious, Captain, because of the victim here. And we talked about this before in the garage, and I cannot explain why, but some of these cases, they just... They just bother you and disrupt you more than others. And this is one for me, when we talk about Amber and her life, it's described as tragic. I don't know that I would describe it as tragic, but I certainly didn't know her. I would describe it as sad and upsetting. She was just 39 years old when she was killed. And this is a violent murder, a violent, very bloody crime scene. But in her 39 years, unfortunately, Amber lost her parents at a young age. So she was raised by her grandparents. And then she has an additional tragedy of losing her sister in a car accident. When she becomes an adult, most of us go out, we spread our wings. Some of us go off to college. Some of us start our careers. Some start a family. Amber was such a great person, she did none of those things. Her grandparents who raised her because of the tragedies in her early life, they were in need of care to be taken care of. They raised her and took care of her growing up, and now it was Amber's turn to take care of her grandparents as they were very elderly in Amber's adult life. And it was only less than a year before Amber was killed after her grandparents passing away that she was able to spread her wings and go out and live a more traditional adult lifestyle. Right. She was, she was living in a home of her own for the first time. Little did anybody know that she would live there for less than a year before she is killed. Now, one thing that makes me very angry here in this case, captain is we have this beautiful, wonderful person, kind hearted, good natured person, and make no make no mistake about it, the beer that was picked for this week, that's on purpose. I believe that Amber, 39 years old, thought that she was out with friends that night, thought that she was surrounded by friends that night. And it turns out it was the exact opposite. Not only is she killed, but whoever was there with her, and there's the waters are murky, but whoever was there with her that night No one, it doesn't seem like anybody came to her aid. Nobody seemed to stand up for this wonderful, kind-hearted person. Yeah, it makes absolutely no sense, and we'll go through some of the details of the events, but you have people at this party, somebody's being attacked, and nobody stops them, or nobody speaks up afterwards. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. The following week, the Chronicle and Times Floyd County reported a community mourns ask questions. As investigation continues into woman's murder, questions abound. And this article really lays out the case fairly well. And we'll get into some problems that I have with the article, some problems that I have with this case in general. But the article reads, The investigation into the death of Prestonburg native Amber Spradlin is ongoing, though no arrests have yet been made in connection with her murder. After her body was found on June 18th, Spradlin's death has been at the center of controversy, although Kentucky State Police haven't said much about the case yet. They have confirmed that her death is believed to be the result of foul play. All right, let's let's dissect this a little bit before we get all the way through the article, okay? First of all, an investigation ongoing... No kidding. I 100% believe that, and I do believe that the Kentucky State Police are doing good work on this investigation. I also believe that this thing will be solved. And in fact, I was a little nervous talking about this case today, Captain, here in the garage, because due to circumstance, we're recording this several days before it will be released. There's a chance that by the time this hits your earballs, there may be an arrest in this case, because I think that Kentucky State Police are doing good work on this case. Now, what I don't like 
is almost every one of these articles, they are dancing around this whole idea of this being a brutal, violent murder. That's what it is. Let's call it what it is. It's a brutal, violent murder. If you dumb this down or sugarcoat it and make it anything other than what it is, shame on you. All of these articles, and look, this is a fine newspaper that we're quoting from, but Kentucky State Police, Prestonburg Police, Floyd County, and the newspapers, everybody keeps saying suspected foul play. You heard her loved one. You heard her relative talking in that trailer leading us into today's show. She stabbed 11 times, at least 11 times. This is not suspected foul play. This is foul play. Right. This is a violent, brutal murder of a good-natured, kind person. The incident took place in the Arkansas Creek area of the Martin community. Okay. Again, the other problem that I have with some of the reporting here is that most of these articles just say that it this is an incident that took place at a residence in the Arkansas Creek area. Well, no, we know what residence it took place at. Right. Somebody killed Amber Spradlin in the home of Dr. Michael McKinney. Let's let's say that. That's a fact. Not let's not allude to where her body was found and recovered from. Now, in a statement issued June 27th, the attorney, the the family, very rightfully so, good on them. Good job by them. They hired an attorney. His name is Mark Wolander. He issued a statement on behalf of Spradlin's family announcing there will be a press conference on June 29th. That press conference was very interesting to listen to. It, I, I'm having trouble finding it online or on YouTube today, so I don't know if it was taken down. You can find a short version of that. In fact, that's what we played for you in the trailer today. But that press conference was interesting because it had details about the crime that were not listed in most of the papers or the articles that are about this case. This article goes on to say the purpose, the statement said, is to discuss updates on the murder investigation and the family's concerns about the case. Quote, the family has questions as to those who were at Dr. Michael McKinney's house located on Arkansas Creek Road. This is in Martin, Kentucky. So to kind of paint a picture here, Martin, Kentucky is a community that is southeast-ish. It's it's south of Peters uh it's south of Prestonsburg. Amber worked in Prestonsburg. And that's not a huge community. It's like 3600 people. Looks to be a great community, though, like a lot of good restaurants. Uh, Very quickly, you could be out in the country off of any route going out of that little tiny town there. But one of those communities would be Martin, Kentucky, which is a much smaller community. I believe about 600 people live in that area, and it's not terribly far from Prestonsburg. Now, the thing that I like here is that, look. The family, what did they say? The family has questions as to those who were at Dr. Michael McKinney's house. They're not dancing around the idea that we know where her body was found. And this is a prominent doctor. He's a dentist in Prestonburg. He's also the owner of the restaurant that Amber Spradlin worked at. So she worked as a hostess. I was trying to figure out how long she had been working there. It sounds to me roughly maybe a year But the other information that's coming out of East Kentucky is that she was friends with this Dr. Michael McKinney, or at least thought she was. Yeah, the doctor was her boss and supposedly her her friend. And he's supposed to be this well-known dentist in town, probably doing pretty well for himself if he's a restaurant owner and a a well-known, well-liked dentist. So how does this well-known, well-liked professional And this very much liked, kind-hearted person, Amber Spradlin, end up back at his place, and then she's found murdered at about 10 a.m. the next morning. Well, let's start breaking down the timeline in Amber's case. Yes, Captain. So on June 17th, it's my understanding that Amber Spradlin went to her place of work, which is the Brick House Restaurant. 
I've looked them up online. They got a cool menu. Looks like the kind of the place that you could walk in and see the captain and the colonel sitting at a table, big plates of food, and a bunch of beers, having a good time. Amber Spradlin, like we said, had worked there for approximately one year, and she is getting along with coworkers and friends with the owner, who is this Dr. Michael McKinney. Sometime after her shift, Dr. Michael McKinney and Amber and others, these others are not named, went to a place called the Seasons Inn Motel. Now, what happens is afterward, time unknown, they go from the Seasons Inn Motel and end up back at Dr. Michael McKinney's house. That sounds all a little confusing, but further digging found out that there is a restaurant and bar at the Seasons Inn Motel. My guess here, without being able to confirm this, what would make the most sense is that Dr. Michael McKinney and Amber Spradlin, along with others unnamed, go to the Seasons Inn Motel. They're at the restaurant. They're at the bar. They're having an after-hours good time, right? After work, let's get together for a couple beverages, maybe a pitcher of margaritas, have a good time. Right. We've all gone out after work. We all, for the most part, enjoy it. However, this this gathering continues and makes its way to the doctor's house, which is not terribly far away, maybe 10 minutes or so. But this party supposedly continues on through the night into the wee hours of the morning. What we've been told is that at some point, and this is believed to be in the five o'clock hour, the 5 a.m. hour, that there is a call from someone that is at this party or at this gathering that says to 911. And it's a little confusing what the 911 call is, but the reason why people were up in arms and why people are furious about this case, especially the citizens of Prestonsburg, is that nobody ever responded to this call. Now, to be perfectly clear, we do not know exactly what that call was to 911. And as the story goes, there's another call to 911. This is close to the 10 a.m hour this call is responded to and this is when authorities find amber spradlin murdered having been stabbed at least 11 times rightfully so people were up in arms because many believe had there been a response to the first 911 call that this could have all been avoided amber's life could have been saved she could have been walking around with the rest of us the thing here is, though, we don't know what that first call was about. Now, the rumors that are coming out, and this would seem to make some sense, there's two rumors. One, that there were two calls in that 5 o'clock hour placed to 911. The other rumor is that there was one single call, but there were two people, two voices that were on the call. Those 911 calls have not been released to the public, and I do not anticipate that they will be anytime soon, even after an arrest is made. The reason being is there's probably going to be some kind of lawsuit that is involved in this case. So the rumors I have heard, and these seem to make some sense to me, Captain, is that a 911 call is placed and there are two people on the call or there's a follow-up call. And both rumors are very similar, that there's a fight. There's some kind of altercation going on at this residence. They might need the police to come and break this thing up. Either somebody else jumps on the phone or a second call is placed, which kind of calls off the alarm. Everything's fine here. We got it all sorted out. No big deal. No need to send anybody. Whatever call comes in at 10 a.m., again, this is not clear, but this leads authorities to going out to Dr. Michael McKinney's house and finding Amber Spradlin dead. As that article stated, she was pronounced dead at the scene by the coroner's office. That's on the 18th of June. So even though the, the emergency didn't respond right away, what law enforcement now has to do is gather up all the information of who was at that party and who was having interactions with Amber. Correct. And so this article says the family has learned that along with Dr. McKinney, his son, Michael K. McKinney, 
Roy Kidd and there were at least two other individuals at the home when Amber was brutally murdered. And that's a quote from the family. The family, the statement that they released, will also be addressing concerns they have regarding Floyd County Judge Executive Robbie Williams' decision to transfer the 911 emergency call center from Kentucky State Police Post 9 in Pikeville to the city of Prestonsburg's 911 call center. Okay, so to break that down for everybody, and this is one thing that I don't appreciate. We have people saying that there's some kind of police cover up here. Kentucky State Police, it doesn't seem like they would have any vested interest in covering this up. And as we said, we know some members of that force. It's a large force, and we're not going to sit here and pretend that every one of them are Eagle Scouts, the best person you ever met in the whole world. But what this article was stating is just the facts. In 2022, December of 2022, it was a decision made by a judge and the mayor of Prestonsburg to remove the 911 call center duties from Kentucky State Police from that post nine and bring them in house to Prestonsburg. The reason why to save a whole bunch of money. Now where the gray area becomes is who is supposed to respond to those calls and who is dispatch supposed to call to those calls. And why didn't they respond? So the problem here is this residence is not in Prestonsburg. But the 911 call center is in Prestonsburg. Kentucky State Police, and it's, this sounds reasonable, says, look, this used to be our jurisdiction. The calls would come into our call center, and we would dispatch a patrol car to the call. Well, now that the call center is moved and it's in-house with Prestonsburg, they are to dispatch one of their police officers a Prestonsburg police officer patrol car to the call. What we do know is whoever was dispatched or not dispatched, no one arrived to the scene. Nobody showed up to that 5 a.m. call. The problem is this incident did not occur within the city limits of Prestonsburg. So we're getting conflicting reports and statements. The mayor of Prestonsburg is saying, well, we received the call at our 911 call center. Our officers have an obligation to the citizens of Prestonsburg. And if we have cars available, we send them past city limits, meaning they are, it, it, the gray area is who is supposed to be responding or dispatched to calls outside of Prestonsburg city limits, but within the county of Floyd. And so there's a little bit of finger pointing here. The Prestonsburg PD and mayor are saying mm, Kentucky State Police or, or the county should have been responding to those calls. And Kentucky State Police and the county are saying, no, no, no. The deal, the contract that was made so your city could save money is that you would take these calls or at least dispatch us if you don't have cars available. The thing here is trying to sort out who dropped the ball. Was it the call center? and they actually dispatched somebody to go to the scene and nobody showed up? Right. Or did the call center just not dispatch anybody? The statements by the mayor are troubling because it, it almost sounds like the mayor is saying, well, if we have a car available, we send someone. If not, we have priority with Prestonsburg because the taxpayers that are funding the 911 call center live here. Okay, well, what? Like you, you, you call and order a pizza and they're just like, no, all of our cars are out, so we can't sell you a pizza. That's not how it works. Somebody has to respond to this call, even if it was called off. In most jurisdictions, that's protocol. Somebody calls 911, even if somebody calls back and says, nope, all good here, officers. They still send somebody out to make sure that there's nothing horrible going on at that scene.
Finding the music you love shouldn't be hard. That's why Pandora makes it easy to explore all your favorites and discover new artists and genres you'll love. Enjoy a personalized listening experience simply by selecting any song or album, and we'll make a station crafted just for you. Best of all, you can listen for free. Download Pandora on the Apple App Store or Google Play and start hearing the soundtrack to your life. If you're a parent, you want to be doing everything you can to set your child up for success in life. So make sure to check out IXL. IXL is an online learning program for kids. Use it on your computer, phone, or tablet. IXL covers math, language arts, science, and social studies through interactive practice problems from pre-K to 12th grade. IXL even has skill plans for specific textbooks. As kids practice, they get positive feedback, awards, and clear explanations when they get questions wrong. Plus, as your kid uses it, the IXL program figures out what your kids need more help with and adapts. You'll save so much time. One subscription gets you everything. All subjects, all grade levels, one site. You'll save so much money, too. Memberships start at only $9.95 a month. IXL is something that all the parents are leaning on these days. The kids take a break for summer. You don't want them forgetting everything that they learned last year and starting off slow this year. No. My friends tell me their kids are loving the IXL experience, and the parents are very happy with IXL as well. It's something you will want to check out. With the school year ramping up, now is the best time to get IXL. Our listeners can get an exclusive 20% off IXL membership when they sign up today at IXL.com slash True Crime Garage. Visit IXL.com slash True Crime Garage to get the most effective learning program out there at the best price. Summer goes by in a splash. Instacart helps you make the most of every moment. You can shop essentials from hot dogs to paper plates to sunscreen from over 1,200 stores all in one app. With delivery in as fast as an hour, you can spend more time making the most of summer. Instacart, add summer to cart. Download the app to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. It's true. We are what we eat, just like it is for our four-legged family members. Pet parents, if you love your dog or cat like family, feed them like family with Fresh Pet. Your basic dry-off-the-shelf dog and cat food are filled with meat meals, additives, and byproducts. Those things will never be in Fresh Pet. Their recipes are simple. Fresh whole ingredients, real meat, gently steam cooked without preservatives, and refrigerated like meat should be. Feed your pet fresh pet. You'll soon see increased energy, a softer, shinier coat, improved digestion, allergy relief, and even a healthier weight. Find fresh pet in the fridge on the pet food aisle or get details at freshpet.com about retailers with curbside and home delivery options. Making mealtime exciting again. Fresh Pet. Picky Eater approved. All right, we are back. Cheers, mates, to the windows, to the walls, and cheers to everybody in the back. Cheers to you, Captain. And one thing here that we need to sort out is in this article, it says that the family, Spradlin's family, has said that they have learned that along with Dr. McKinney, his son Michael K. McKinney, Roy Kidd, there were at least two other individuals at the home when Amber was brutally murdered. That's their words. I don't know. We cannot figure out because their names have not been released who those other two people were. And the the statement is at least two other people were there. Now, when they say two other people, is one of them Amber or is this five people plus Amber or is it five plus plus Amber? It's a little difficult to sort out right now exactly who was there. And again, the details coming out are sketchy. The way that they're delivered, it's almost like they're concerned about protecting the people at this gathering. 
the problem for that for me is until I can prove you didn't have anything to do with the murder of this woman, you had something to do with the murder of this woman. Who cares about protecting these individuals? It seems pretty clear to me, right? Police show up, detectives show up. We've got to, we've got to secure this scene and collect evidence. You were here, you were here, you were here, you were here. What happened? The yeah, good people need to turn be on. Charged with something because the good- they, you know, first of all, you didn't stop the attack, and then once she was attacked, when there was a call made, which we believe was made by Amber, it wasn't made by anybody else. You did well. Not, I, you did see that? I don't this- know. He did nothing in the assistance of uh, getting her help. Correct. Yeah, that I don't know. I don't know if Amber called or if somebody else called and said, hey, there's a fight going on here. And then somebody else called off the dogs. But what I would like to know is the time of death. Because what we do know is everything we're hearing is that that first call came in in the 5 o'clock hour. Second call or the third call comes in in the 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. hour, and that's when they find her dead at the scene. Well, if you can get a, an expert to say that, you know what, she was very likely killed before that five o'clock call. Well, now you have a whole different set of circumstances. Or if you can get an expert to say that she was killed shortly after that five o'clock call, we got other concerns. And if, if she was killed hours before the 10 a.m. call, one, who called at 10 a.m., why, and what was done in the meantime? Do we have people there that were cleaning up the scene, destroying evidence? Yeah, tampering with evidence. Some of the more disturbing rumors coming out regards the injuries to our victim here, and it goes beyond stabbed at least 11 times in the head, face, throat, neck area. The rumors are that a knife was broken off in her temple, that the cause of death was actually due to her throat being slit. And this is even more troubling. I Believe it or not, more troubling. It's believed that she had no defensive wounds. So was somebody or somebody's holding her down while she was attacked and she was not able to defend herself? Yeah. Or was she passed out at the time? The other rumors is that there was a bag of bloody objects found, bloody towels, cloths, maybe even clothing. This to me would suggest that somebody was attempting to clean up the scene. Right. The other rumor is that the scene was incredibly bloody. And and I think this... This one carries a lot of weight because of something we know that has been stated by Kentucky State Police and the family's attorney later. This rumor is that there was the the hallway along with the stairs and maybe even a portion of the upstairs of this home covered in blood. Another statement by the family's attorney is that at least one other individual was cut And that individual was somebody that we've already named, Roy Kidd. So then you got to wonder a couple of things here. If there was a fight that broke out, amongst who did this fight break out? Why is Roy Kidd injured? We know that in stabbings, it's very common for the perpetrator to accidentally cut themselves. The other thing that we're wondering is if there were in fact no defensive wounds and she was awake, moving, attempting to defend herself, if she doesn't have defensive wounds, that means somebody or somebody's held her down or she was restrained in some form or fashion. Did Roy Kidd get this injury because he's the perpetrator? Did Roy Kidd get this injury because he was involved in holding her down? Or did Roy Kidd get this injury because he was attempting to defend her her, or he was in an altercation himself with somebody else? Lots of questions here, and it seems very easy to me that we should be able to have the names of the persons that were there. 
if you all are innocent, then you have no reason to not tell us who else was there that night. I believe Kentucky State Police have a good idea who else was there that night. Oh, definitely. And the other thing, to circle back to the blood everywhere rumor that is out there, is that Kentucky State Police have said that they have been interviewing people and have searched numerous residences, electronic devices, and have a bunch of physical evidence. The evidence that they have, Captain, is now at the Kentucky State Police Laboratory. So from what we've been told is that some of the blood evidence that was collected at the scene contains blood from two, if not more, sources. Of course, we would expect to have our victim's blood there, Amber's blood, unfortunately. Right. We know from information coming out of East Kentucky that Roy Kidd may have had an injury, a bleeding injury, a cut that night. There would seem to be reason that you might have another individual that had some type of injury, especially if Roy Kidd wasn't the sole perpetrator of whatever went down that night. So what they're doing now is these lab reports and please push Amber's case to the front line because you have a killer walking amongst everyone out there in East Kentucky. Nobody's been arrested yet. Nobody's been arrested or charged at all. We're going on six weeks now. So they're going to need to sort out the DNA and the blood evidence that they have. One thing that's that I have a lot, uh, I th- believe there's a lot of promise here, Captain, is I believe once they have those results, those results are going to confirm or completely refute some of the statements given to them at the scene. It's of my belief that where the problem is in this investigation currently is you probably have multiple people giving multiple versions of this story. Right. And, and it's all going to collapse, like you said, as as more reports come out and more of the evidence is examined by professionals, then they're going to go, eh, see, you told us this story, but that doesn't line up with the evidence. And people are going to start folding and uh, turn in on each other pretty quickly. I hope so. And I think I think the way that that kind of starts is to quit dancing around these ideas and, and just say what it is. It's not suspected foul play. It's a brutal homicide of a good-natured person. It's not found in the area of Arkansas Creek. It's The victim was found dead at this dentist's home right? where he's there with his son and some other people. And who knows who, who came or went throughout the course of that evening. The other thing, too, is when you have the finger pointing going on, and, and that makes sense that you would have that because I believe that there will be a lawsuit in this case regarding the 911 or lack thereof 911 response, is it wouldn't be outside of your best interest to release those 911 calls at some point, especially after you've charged someone or someone's in this murder. Because I think what we need here is clear evidence who dropped the ball. Because if the dispatch call center did not call anybody, did not dispatch anybody, well, therein lies your problem. That's you. That's easily fixed. You take the power back from that Prestonsburg call center and you put it back at the Kentucky State Police Post 9. I'm wondering if it's the problem to me, if I had to sit here and, and make a wager on it, captain, I feel like the problem is either the call center or the Prestonsburg police. Because it sounds to me that a lot of people are saying Prestonsburg police were supposed to respond to this. And I'm getting the vibe that it's like, well, if we have a car available, we send somebody. And in this situation, somebody, again, just rumor, somebody called back or somebody hopped on the phone and said, nope, everything's fine here. So we disregarded the call. Well, if protocol in that area is to respond anyway to any call coming in, then you guys dropped the ball. And I'm sorry, but saving money is not worth risking lives. We need people to respond to these calls. People rely on having this lifeline. 
Well, one of the things I'm, I'm proud of about being a part of this show is our audience and, and the call to action, like we said before, getting so many people on social media and through emails saying, please take a look at this case. I know on the surface it looks like, you know, there's maybe some kind of conspiracy here, but what the conspiracy to me is the people at the party. Mm-hmm. And it's not law enforcement. And and we're going to play a clip just a little bit later where you'll hear about how they're tracking down every lead. But a lot of the leads that they're getting right now are just hearsay. But I think this case is very important. Again, lack of information, lack of evidence. But we can get people talking about this. This doesn't need to go away from the public's eye. Well, and in the defense of Kentucky State Police, I believe the reason for the lack of information made available to the public currently is that they're sorting through these different statements that were given by people that were there either when she was killed or there at the gathering before or after she was killed. Again, we it would be foolish of us to sit here and believe that all of those statements are 100% true, because if they were, there would be an arrest by now. And so my belief is, and I think this will pan out once an arrest or arrests are made, is that Kentucky State Police are rightfully so withholding a lot of this information and details about the timeline, about the crime scene, and about the evidence because they're still sorting through these stories. And probably a lot of them are a lie. And what they do know is that if a bunch of these people that were involved or not involved, or at least there that night, if they have all the information that Kentucky state police do, well, they have a a greater arsenal than the detectives have. And so that's why they're withholding information rightfully. So let's get the lab results. Let's test all the evidence, the physical evidence. Let's gather all of the statements. And here's the thing too. You're exactly right, Captain. Conspiracy on the part of the people that were supposed to be her friends. Because guess what? She's not hanging out with any of these people at the Seasons Inn motel and restaurant unless she's invited there. She's not at the dentist home unless she's invited there. She thought these people were her friends. And it turns out, I don't... This kind of thing happens. None of these people are your friends. What, why is the truth not being delivered on a silver platter to the detectives? Now, a couple things that I wanted to make sure from this article that we include before we wrap up here in the garage today, it's some very key things here, Captain. The family, in their statement, said that they have all the confidence in the investigators conducting the investigation. This is the Kentucky State Police. Quote, the family continues to support and thank Captain Randall Subber and the men and women of the Kentucky State Police for their dedication and involvement in the investigation of Amber's murder. The statement said, the family has complete confidence that those responsible will be brought to justice. Spradlin's cousin Debbie Hall, who has been at the forefront of keeping her cousin's case in the public eye, said the community support has been overwhelming. Quote, I knew she had a lot of friends and touched a lot of lives, but I really had no idea, she said. She goes on to say, I have received thousands of messages, texts, and phone calls since this happened. And we talked about Amber's sad and tragic life leading up to this, her childhood with her mother passing away with losing her parents, then losing her sister and then taking care of her grandparents because they did a great job taking care of her. What a good, what a good person to recognize that and to say, you know what? I will be there for you because you were there for me. Put my life on hold because you put a lot of things on hold for me. And so she does her grandparents a solid. And then unfortunately this horrible what a horrible thing to happen to such a good person. And Hall goes on, her cousin goes on to say in this article that she believes that there are many at fault. And I think the captain and I share that opinion. She goes on to say, quote, politicians have placed politics and profit before people and their policies have failed. Amber, the monster who committed this crime and the people supporting them will hopefully be punished. They do not deserve to be in society. Anyone who committed such a brutal murder will do it again. 
Well, it's definitely sad. I mean, some people believe that Amber knew that there was a call into 911 and that she was waiting for help that never showed up. But again, this is important to keep a spotlight on this. Not not that we need to put pressure on law enforcement because I think law enforcement is doing what they need to do. And it's tragic that uh, no first responders showed up and, and nobody came to her rescue and nobody saved her. But nobody at that party did anything. Right. And and so what's going to happen? I, I wouldn't be surprised if 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 everybody at that party isn't charged with something. Right, and I think here the situation, Captain, justice for Amber Spradlin first, right? The, right. I understand 911 being an issue. Remember the old song, Chuck D, Public mm-hmm. Enemy, 911's a joke? Uh, yeah, 911 is a joke in Yo-Town, and we're talking about Prestonsburg, Kentucky. We're talking about Floyd County, Kentucky. Your 911 system is a joke. Return it to the, the Kentucky State Police where they didn't have problems before. Sorry it cost you a little extra money, but it may save lives. And fix that problem after you fix this problem, because there's going to be a lot of red tape involved in the 911 problem. What we need to focus on now is getting justice for Amber, finding out who is responsible. It sounds to me like this is probably a situation where more than one person has some level of involvement in her murder. So that means there are killers or witnesses to a murder walking around free. Well, and that's what the community can do. The true crime community can put pressure to go, here are the individuals that were at the party. These are the individuals that need to be cooperating with police and giving them the correct information and not trying to be uh, nefarious with their answers or their details or their lack thereof. So let's put pressure on them to tell the truth Tell us what happened, and let's get justice for Amber. Be the good person in the room. Somebody there can be the good person and tell police what it is that they need to know. Because here, here's the thing. The captain said conspiracy. The captain said cover-up. When it comes to the people there at that home that night, he could not be more spot on. Because if the rumors are true that either a second individual jumped on the phone and said, nope, nothing to see here, call off the dogs, we don't need any help, the everything's been straightened out or the other rumor that somebody then called in a second call shortly after the first saying the same thing, call off the dogs, nothing to see here. We don't need any help. That is the start of a cover up. That is the start of the conspiracy. That is the first domino that falls in preventing anybody from outside of those four walls, knowing what's going on inside of those walls. And it's not a big leap to make to go from somebody called off the authorities and called off police to someone or someone's started to clean up the scene and cover up what really happened here that night, that horrible, tragic night. And our thoughts are with the community and with Amber's friends and family. Investigation of the murder of Amber Spradlin, Kentucky State Police have issued a PSA regarding information related to the case. They humbly request that anyone who wishes to share information to be sure it is true. KSP is currently investigating what little evidence they have. During the course of this investigation, investigators with Kentucky State Police have interviewed several uh, members of the community and executed numerous search warrants on different residences, electronic devices, uh, collecting physical evidence, along with DNA evidence. Uh, all those, all the evidence has been transported to the KSP laboratories, and we are currently awaiting the results of the evidence. Any false information submitted is likely to consume KSP resources with nothing to show for it. This can also lead to others making claims they believe to be true. Any credible information that anyone may have about this investigation, uh, we would really like to talk to you. So if you have any information that is credible, please call us at 606-433-7711. We would like to add that every tip that comes in or any bit of information that these detectives receive, they have to look into to make sure they're as thorough as possible. So please, if you do call, make sure it's credible information and not hearsay or false information because they have to track those leads down and that's taking time away from the investigation while they're out looking for information that turns out just to be false. A lot of these tips that we're getting, they're going out and they're spending countless hours out investigating and it turns out that it was just false or third-hand information that that wasn't true at all. Uh, So we just ask that if you do have information, we definitely want it. 
but make sure that it's credible information that can help, help us lead to an arrest in this investigation. Reporting for Mountaintop News, I'm Nick Collum. I want to thank everybody for joining us here in the garage. Join us back here next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. And until then, be good, be kind, and don't litter. Pandora makes it easy for you to find your favorite music. Discover new artists and genres by selecting any song or album, and we'll make you a personalized station for free. Download on the Apple App Store or Google Play and enjoy the soundtrack to your life.